Hi guys, it's me, Professor Dia. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, we're going to be going over fundamentals of nursing. This video is for the baby nurses, the newbies. We're gonna be going over uh, the nursing process. We're going to be going over Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and we're gonna be going over delegation. So a lot of great information that is a foundation of everything else that you learn in the nursing program, okay? Now, before we get started, as always, I'm gonna ask you to please support me and support this channel by liking this video. You're gonna love it. Go ahead and give it a thumbs up now so you don't forget. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And be sure to check out my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. There you can sign up for a next generation NCLEX review sessions, part one, part two, part one. I teach you how to think like the test writer, where they are trying to lead you, okay? I teach you how to think critically. I go over priority. I go over delegation, critical thinking. In part two, we actually go over NCLEX type of questions, important rationales. Even if it's switched, even if they flip it on you, you should still understand what the question's asking you and what your answer is supposed to be. You can also sign up for a one-on-one -on -one private tutoring session with me. Maybe you just want to pick my brain about something. Also, if you're a current student, you are struggling. You have to do really well on your next exam. Be sure to check out the audio lessons I have available. Lots of resources, again, on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Almost daily, you can find me covering a variety of nursing topics across my social media platforms, such as TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and right here on YouTube. My handle is the same everywhere, Nexus Nursing. Before we get started, I want to start off with a prayer. If you're not into that, just fast forward, right? If you are and you're not operating heavy machinery, you're not driving a car, close your eyes, bow your head. Father God, thank you, Lord Jesus, for another day on this earth. Thank you for the breath of life in our bodies. Thank you for our health. Thank you for this opportunity that we have to go over this information and review, Father God. Lord, I pray for every single viewer, every single listener. For whatever reason they came to this channel, whatever it is that they're seeking, whatever it is that they're struggling with, Father God, I ask that you please help them. Help them abundantly, Father God. Bless them, Jesus Christ. Lord, I ask that you please give them the discipline to study the way they need to be studying, Father God. Lord, I ask that you remove those distractions um, in their life that's causing them to not study and to not focus, Father God. I ask that you please clear their path towards success. And Lord, I ask that you please allow them to be a blessing to others as they've been blessed. Lord, thank you for all that you have done in our lives. Thank you for all that you've continued to do for us, Jesus Christ. Father God, I ask that you please help me to explain this information in the way that students can understand, that they can process, that they can retain, Father God. Thank you for all you've done, all you continue to do. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right, guys, let's get started. First question. A nurse is caring for a newly admitted patient who's experiencing severe shortness of breath. The nurse determines that the patient is in immediate need of oxygen therapy. Which level of Maslow's hierarchy of needs is the nurse addressing by providing oxygen? Here are your options. Self-actualization, safety and security, physiological, or love and belonging. What do you guys think? And guys, the correct answer is physiological. If a patient needs oxygen and you're giving them oxygen, you're addressing a physiological need. When you think of physiological, I want you to think about anything that physically keeps your patient alive, right? So oxygen, food, water, fluid and electrolytes, because guess what? Fluid and electrolyte imbalance can kill your patient. Glucose, hypo or hyperglycemia can kill your patient, right? Anything that can physically cause harm or kill your patient that falls under physiological integrity, okay? Now, let's look at the wrong options. A, self-actualization. That's um, when you've actually reached your potential, realizing your potential. B, safety and security. That's things like after you make sure that you're alive, so you uh, have taken care of the physiological, you're alive, you're breathing, you're healthy, right? Then you're going to worry about the safety and security, home, job, personal security, resources to live, right? And then D, love and belonging, friendship, intimacy, family, things like that. Now, with these four options, here's what's important to know. The most important, what comes first is going to be physiological. You need to make sure you're alive. You need to make sure your patient's alive before you care about anything else, right? So you always have to address the physiological need, what is keeping your patient alive and healthy, now, after you've addressed that, the second thing that will be of concern is going to be the safety and security. Now that this patient's alive and healthy, do they have resources? 
Do they have resources to take care of themselves, such as a job, such as a vehicle to get to the job, such as a home to live in, right? And then after that, what next as far as priority importance is going to be love and belonging on this list that we're looking at, right? That um, social support system, such as friends and family and intimate relationships. And then last, after you have that love and belonging, you feel like you belong somewhere, right? Last is going to be that self-actualization. Wow, I've reached my potential. Like I've done everything that I feel like I could have done. Okay, moving on. Next question. A nurse is caring for a patient recovering from surgery. A patient is anxious about their prognosis and expresses concern about returning to work. According to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which is the most critical for the nurse to address first in the situation? Here are your options. Self-esteem, safety and security, love and belonging, physiological. What do you guys think? And guys, the answer is right there in the question. It tells you what the patient's concern is. You're going to address the concern. The concern is them going back to work. So what do you think you're going to address? Safety and security. Remember, safety and security, work, home, personal resources, vehicle to get the work home, all of, all of that good stuff, right? Safety and security. They told you that this was their concern, being able to take care of themselves. Um, A, self-esteem. I don't think I talked to you about self-esteem. So self-esteem, this... A patient has to feel like they belong somewhere. They have to have love and belonging before they have self-esteem, which is what? Them feeling good about themselves, right? So self-esteem is that patient um, seeking respect, seeking status, seeking, you know, elevation, right? To feel better about themselves. But again, to get to that point, what comes before that? Love and belonging. Because guess what? If they don't have love and belonging, you think they're going to have self-esteem to even want to go higher and get that respect and get that status? No. All right? So that's what self-esteem is. I talked to you about love and belonging and physiological. So for this question, again, the patient's concerned about going back to work. So you're going to address that going back to work, which is what? Resources, safety, and security. A nurse is working with a patient who, re who has been recently promoted at work and is expressing a strong desire to pursue a higher position within the organization. According to Maslow's hierarchy, hierarchy of needs, the nurse recognizes that this patient is striving to fulfill which type of needs? Sorry, I kind of gave you guys the answer in my last explanation. But anyway, here are your options. Self-actualization, love and belonging, safety and security, self-esteem. And the correct answer is self-esteem. Wanting more for yourself. What does that mean? If you want more for yourself, that means that you think you're worthy, right? Because if you didn't think you deserved it, if you didn't think you were worthy, you wouldn't want more for yourself. And um, I know you guys are brand new. You just started the nursing program. You haven't done psych yet, but I'm just going to forewarn you. When you get to psych and you're, talk, you're learning about patients who are depressed, one of the telltale signs that the patient is rising out of that depression is if they get upset when family or friends don't visit or call when they say it said they would. Why? Them getting upset means that they value themselves because guess what? If they didn't have any self-esteem, they wouldn't get upset when people broke their promises because they weren't worth that promise to begin with. But as they start to get self-esteem, as they start to feel better about themselves, they value themselves and they get upset or offended if someone lies to them or doesn't keep their promise, okay? So that's important for you guys to know. And in um, these group of options, right, what comes first? What's our first priority? Because physiological isn't there, but we see safety and security. After you are alive and you're healthy, the next thing you're gonna worry about is your safety, your security, your resources. So C would come first out of these list of options. Then after that, B, after you're safe and you're secure, you want to belong somewhere. You want to have love. After that, you can do D, have self-esteem and want to go higher and elevate yourself as far as status, et cetera. And then finally, A, self-actualization. Wow, I'm looking back at my life and, you know, I'm proud of what I've accomplished. I feel, I feel good about it. Okay? 
Next question. A nurse is assessing a patient who's experiencing anxiety due to an uncertain diagnosis. The patient expresses fear of the unknown and asks, what will happen to me if I don't get better? According to Maslow's hi hierarchy of needs, which need is the patient primarily focused on? Is it love and belonging, safety and security, self-actualization, or physiological? It's B, safety and security. And I know a lot of you guys are thinking D, physiological. Let's go back to the question. The patient says, what will happen to me if I don't get better? What will happen to me if I don't get better? Well, guess what? If you don't get better, you know you're going to die, right? So that's not what they're asking. So because that's where you are going, physiological. Physiological is what keeps you alive or kills you. When the patient says, what's going to happen to me if I don't get better? How am I going to live? How am I going to work? How am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to pay my car note? How am I going to send my children through college? That's what that patient's saying to you. And what does that fall under? Safety and security. Okay, what's going to happen to me if I don't get better? How am I going to survive, right? Because if you don't get better, you know you're gonna die. So it's, it's not physiological, it's safety and security. Fear of the unknown. A nurse is caring for a patient who recently recovered from a life-threatening illness and now expresses a desire to volunteer at a local shelter to help others in need. According to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which need is the patient striving to fulfill? Self-esteem, self-actualization, safety and security, physiological. B, self-actualization. Go back. It says that the patient recovered from a life-threatening illness. They reached that potential and now they want to volunteer. They want to give back. Self-actualization, they're seeking personal growth. They've, they've reached what they wanted to accomplish and now they're seeking personal growth. They want to give back and feel better about themselves because they're able to contribute to society. Next question. A nurse is caring for a patient who is post-operative and complaining of severe pain. The nurse administers pain medication and the patient's pain decreases. According to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which level of need was addressed by administering the pain medication? A, self-esteem, B, physiological, C, safety and security, or D, love and belonging? The only correct answer here, guys, is B, physiological. What ch changes the physiological integrity of your body? Go back to the question. That patient was in what? Severe pain. You want, you want to know what severe pain does to you? Tachycardia, tachypnea, hypertension. It makes physiological changes. When you're thinking of physiological, you're thinking about what kills your patient, what's going to cause harm to your patient. Severe pain will do that. When you think of severe uh, uh, physiological integrity, I don't want you to only think of food, water, I want you to think of abnormal vital signs. I want you to think of abnormal labs. I want you to think of abnormal fluid and electrolytes. I want you to um, think of abnormal glucose. Okay, again, anything that causes physical damage to your patient is gonna fall under physiological. A nurse is caring for a patient who's been admitted, admitted with shortness of breath, cough, and fever. The nurse performs an initial assessment, including vital signs, lung auscultation, and a review of the patient's medical history. Which step of the nursing process is the nurse completing during this assessment? A, diagnosis, B, planning, C, evaluation, or D, assessment? And guys, the correct answer is D, assessment. Assessment is anything you do to get information, guys. So it's doing a physical examination on your patient, also performing an interview on your patient or caregivers, or looking to the patient's chart to get information, what other nurses wrote, what the healthcare provider wrote, physical therapy OT, right? Anything you do to get information is considered an assessment. 
And in the question, it tells you that you took vital signs, you listened to their lungs, you looked at the medical history, you're doing what? Getting information, that is an assessment. Now let's look at the wrong answer choices. Diagnosis, diagnosis, nursing diagnosis is what? A, cl a clinical judgment of the patient's response to a medical diagnosis. So you have a medical diagnosis, which is disease process, right? The nursing diagnosis is not the disease, it's the patient's reaction to the disease. It's the clinical judgment of that patient's reaction to that disease or the medical diagnosis. B, planning. What is planning? The goals that you set, the objectives that you set for that patient. E, evaluation. That is assessing the effectiveness of your nursing intervention. So whatever that nursing intervention was that you, you did, evaluation is assessing the effect is effectiveness. Did it work or didn't it? After receiving a report from the evening shift, a nurse develops a plan of care for a newly admitted patient with chronic pain. The nurse sets a goal to reduce the patient's pain level from 8 out of 10 to 4 out of 10 within uh, 24 hours. Which step of the nursing process is the nurse engaging in when setting this goal? Assessment, diagnosis, planning, or implementation? Planning. Remember, planning is when you set a goal or an objective. Okay, it needs to be realistic and it needs to be objective, which means it can be measured. Okay, and a time frame needs to be attached to it. A nurse is preparing to delegate tasks to a nursing assist assistant during the shift. Which of the following tasks is appropriate for the nurse to delegate to the nursing assistant? A, administering IV pain medication to a post-surgical patient. B, monitoring the respiratory and oxygen saturation of a patient with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. C, assisting the patient with bathing and toileting, or D, assessing the patient's wound for signs of infection. And the correct answer is C, assisting the patient with bathing and toileting. So when it comes to a nursing assistant, remember, they're not licensed. They're not a nurse. They're an unlicensed assistive personnel. So they can do things such as ADLs, feeding, bathing, ambulating stable patients, um, getting equipment, picking things up. You can even give an, an assistive personnel, um, you can have them go to another floor to pick up medication or even blood because they're not doing anything that requires critical thinking. They're just picking it up and bringing it to you. They can do vital signs. And here's how I want you to think of it when you're doing delegation. If it's a UAP, if it requires critical thinking, do not delegate it to them. Am I saying UAPs don't know how to think critically? No, I'm just telling you, you need to think that way so that you can get your test question correctly. If it requires critical thinking, it has to be skilled nursing. So that's why a UAP, they can take blood pressure because they're just taking the blood pressure and charting it and reporting it. They can take a temperature. They're taking the temp, temp and they're reporting it. They're taking respirations. They're taking that respiration and they're reporting it. Can they listen to lung sounds? No. Why? Lung sounds require critical thinking. You need to know, are you listening to clear lung sounds? Are you listening to crackles? Are you listening to wheezing? Are you listening to ronchi? That takes skilled nursing. So that's how you're supposed to think when you're trying to figure out the difference between a UAP and a skilled nurse, okay? Now let's look at the wrong answer choices. A, administering IV pain medication. Medication, that's skilled nursing. You gotta be licensed to do that, right? Monitoring the respiratory rate and O2 sat of a patient with COPD. Monitoring, that takes assessment because you gotta know the difference if the patient's getting better or, or worse. That's skilled nursing. Assessing the patient's wound, assessing that skilled nursing. Why? All of those three, A, B, and D, require what? Critical thinking, okay? A registered nurse is caring for multiple patients on a medical surgical unit. The nurse must delegate tasks to a licensed practical nurse and a nursing assistant. Which of the following tasks should the nurse assign to the LPN? A, teaching a newly diagnosed diabetic patient about blood sugar monitoring. B, assisting the patient with feeding and ambulation. C, administering sub-Q insulin injection to a patient with diabetes. Or D, taking vital signs on a stable post-op patient. C, what can we give to the LPN? 
administering sub-Q insulin injection to a patient with diabetes. Why? This is the most stable patient. They have got diabetes. This is a chronic disorder. There's nothing new going on. Yes, LPNs can give medications. Yes, LPNs can remind patients. They do teaching after the original teaching. So the RN does the original teaching. If there's a new admit, there's a new medication, there's a new diagnosis, anything that's new, that RN does the initial teaching. They do the complex in-depth teaching. The LPN comes behind the RN and resumes that teaching. And so, for example, before the LPN gives the antihypertensive medication, they'll remind that patient, hey, make sure you dangle, get up slowly, press the call bell because it, this medication can cause orthostatic hypotension. That's not the first time they're hearing this information. They heard this information from the RN upon admission, okay? Anything that is new, the LPN cannot do. If it requires assessment, if it requires teaching, if it requires evaluation, that is the RN. The LPN is going to get the most stable uh, patient, the least complex patient. Look at A, teaching. The fact that this started off with teaching, we know we can't give that to the LPN. It's going to be the RN. B, administering, excuse me, assisting a patient with feeding and ambulation. That doesn't require uh, critical thinking. You can give that to the UAP. Now, here's what's so crazy. You see the same question? What if it said assisting a patient with feeding and ambulation immediately after a stroke? That changed the whole question. Why? Because if the patient just had a stroke, that means they that stroke is new, there may be new deficiencies. So even though the UAP can feed patients, they can walk patients, they can ambulate patients, because there's a possible new deficiency, the RN has to feed that patient and ambulate that patient. Why? Because while they're feeding the patient, they're looking, they're assessing, is that patient choking? Are they pocketing food? Is there drool coming out the side of their mouth, right? Because we might need a swallow study. Ambulation, the RN is gonna do that first ambulation after um, the stroke because they need to see, is that patient leaning on the wall or on the nurse? Are they dragging a leg? Maybe that patient needs physical therapy. Maybe they need a walker. Maybe they need a cane, but the RN won't know unless they assess, right? You see how just one or two words can completely change a question. So be very careful, guys. Choice D, taking vital signs on a stable post-op patient. We can give that to the UAP. Why? UAPs can do vitals. And the thing is, the patient was stable. What if the question said, let me read it to you again. What if it said taking vital signs on a newly post-op patient. <gasps> because that patient just had surgery, we don't know if they're stable yet. Guess who's gonna take that first vital sign, the RN? Even though UAPs do vitals all the time, because the patient had something new, they just came from surgery, they're not deemed stable until the RN deems them to be stable. So the RN has to take those first uh, uh, set of vital signs when that patient comes to the floor. I'm telling you guys, one word will completely change a question, so be, be very careful. The nurse on a medical surgical unit is delegating tasks to a nursing assistant. Which of the following tasks is appropriate for the nurse to delegate to the nursing assistant? A, assessing a patient's level of pain using a pain scale, B, measuring the, urine, measuring the output of a patient's urinary catheter, C, administering oral medications to a patient, D, teaching a patient how to use blood glucose monitor. And guys, the correct answer is B, measuring output of a patient's urinary catheter. All they're doing is measuring they're recording and reporting. That is it. There's no critical thinking involved. Look at A, assessing, RN. Look at C, administering a medication, RN or LPN. D, teaching, RN. All right, guys, and we are down to our last question. A registered nurse on a surgical unit is assigning tasks to an LPN. Which of the following tasks should the RN delegate to the LPN? A, performing a comprehensive head-to-toe assessment on a newly admitted patient. B, developing a care plan for a patient with multiple comorbidities. C, administering an IM injection to a patient in chronic pain. Or D, providing patient education on a wound care to a post-op patient. What are we going to give to the LPNC? 
give an IM injection to a patient in chronic pain. Chronic. They've had this for a long time. This is nothing new. This is the most stable patient. We're going to give that to the LPN. Look at A, performing a comprehensive. You know what that word comprehensive means? That means in-depth. Anything that's in-depth. I can't speak. Anything that is in-depth. Anything that is chronic, RN is going to do. Look at B, developing a care plan. Only the RN can develop care plans. The LPN, the UAP follow the care plan, but only the RN can create the care plan and make changes to the care plan. D, providing education. Who does teaching? RN. And guys, that is it uh, for this video. If you found this video to be helpful, if you'd like more content on prior uh, delegation, because I really didn't do priority. Maybe I'll do priority on my next video. But anyway, if you'd like to see more content on delegation, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the nursing process, please let me know in the comment section if you'd like to see me cover anything that I haven't covered yet, or you'd like to see more of whatever you want, let me know in the comment section. I can't reply to everyone, but I do see your comments. I do read them. Guys, don't forget to check out my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Again, you can find me across so many social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, right here, YouTube. My handle's the same, Nexus Nursing. Guys, thank you so much for watching. You guys will catch me on the next video.